Years of string tension will take their toll on the guitar body. At this point where the neck meets the body, the joint will actually stay solid, but the body will shift over time from that tension. As this happens, the strings will come up, causing a high action. The first fix for that is typically to take down the saddle, and as years go by and the saddle gets too low, if someone hasn't done a neck set, then the bridge usually gets lowered. It's not the optimum fix, but it does happen a lot. In this case, we need to take the neck out and reset it, and then afterwards the bridge will get replaced also. The traditional method of removing the neck at the neck to body joint has been to use steam. A couple of the drawbacks to that are one, you could blush the finish if you're not careful, and two, any loose joint is going to allow steam to shoot out from there, and it's hard to control as you're trying to remove the neck. The heat stick does this job without the steam. Ian Davlin is the guitar repairman who thought up this dry method. Ian was using a bulky power supply, then Gene Embody hit on the idea of simply using a soldering iron. The heat stick is made of tempered 182 copper and fits into the iron just like a replacement soldering tip. You have the long stick for deeper body guitars such as dreadnoughts, and you have the short stick for your arch top guitars, shallow body, thin lines. You uh, can use this on a mandolin, and also a much more difficult job, but it can be done with the stick, is the tenon necks of an SG and Les Paul type guitars. I'm gonna start off by loosening the fretboard extension. So I'm gonna put a couple of protective pieces here and put a heating iron on. Give that a little time to warm the fretboard. Okay, I think we've got sufficient heat. I use a thin pallet knife to get under the fretboard. Some are a little more stubborn with the release of the glue. You wanna slowly work the knife under. You don't wanna force anything. Then you start diving down into the grains of the wood. Be careful of the pick guard too. You don't wanna catch that with the knife. A little bit holding at the end of the dovetail. Okay, so the tongue is loose. I'm gonna remove the fret now to gain access to the dovetail glue joint. In the case of this guitar, it's a 12 fret to the body guitar, so I'm gonna to have to remove the 13th fret to gain access. On a 14 fret guitar, you're gonna shoot for the 15th fret. I'm gonna take my iron and apply heat just to let it come out cleanly. Keep it on long enough until you're sure that the fret's heated up. Probably ready now. So now we've got access to drill the hole. And what you're looking to hit is this gap between the male and female part of the dovetail joint. That falls almost directly below this fret slot. When I come through the fretboard, I'm gonna stay about a half inch from the center. And you wanna basically follow the angle of the dovetail. If you came in straight, then you're gonna end up drilling into the side of this dovetail block. We'll start with a 3 seconds bit that will allow us to find the actual gap in there. And I'm going to drill at the start in reverse. And once it's caused the divot, that should help keep the chipping down. Okay. As it went through the fretboard, I felt it release, which tells you you've hit the air gap. Some guitars actually do not have a gap. If, if you don't find that, don't worry about it because that's the beauty of this heat stick is that it will radiate the heat out into the, into the dovetail joint. Now we're gonna follow this up with a 144 thousandths bit that allows the access for the heat stick. I will put a piece of tape three inches up on the drill bit. This will give us a visual stop as we drill down through the fretboard. Remember to go backwards first. You're looking for that roughly 15 degree angle. Okay, we should be good to go with the heat stick. Okay, we're gonna mount the neck removal jig to the guitar body.
Okay, at this point, we're ready to add the heat stick. You want to insert it into the hole through the fretboard all the way down to the bottom. Then we're going to wait a few minutes and let that warm the joint up. Okay, we've let the heat settle in for five minutes or so. I'm going to put a little bit of water in the joint with a pipette. It's not enough to make any steam. It will let you know as you're loosening the joint as you'll get some water droplets down on the bottom here. And that tells you that it's starting to loosen the neck joint, which is allowing that water to get through. I'll start working the body, semicircular motions, to see if I can get any, any gap to start. And you want to be patient. You can see how much movement we're getting. We're getting close. I can see a good gap all the way down the neck to body on this side. And I believe on this base side, we're getting the same thing. So I'll just keep working it, put a little tension on the heel, which helps force the neck up out of the body. I'll go ahead and take the iron out now. There we go. You can see it came out clean, nothing broken on the dovetail. So no steam to worry about, no blushing of the finish, and that's about it.